Over 30 years of playing the game, and I've played with thousands of people over thousands of rounds of golf, and the most common question I ever hear on the tee box, other than your name, and maybe what's the course record, is what set of tees are we going to play today? I'm here to talk in this video about trying to select the right set of tees for you, for your game, and to make sure you have maximum enjoyment out on the golf course. I'm Ryan Balangie. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I've played with tons of different people over the years, and the full spectrum of golf talent. People who are playing their first 18-hole round that day, and people who have won major championships at the highest level of golf, and really everyone in between that spectrum. And the common question that comes up is, what set of tees do we want to play today? And trying to select the right tees for you and your game is not always straightforward. But let's start with a baseline from the USGA. They're the governing body of golf in the United States and Mexico. They're one of the people who make the rules of the game along with the RNA. And their suggestion for the set of tees that you should play is based on how far you hit your driver. And they look at how far you hit your driver on average and then apply a multiplier to that to put you in a certain range of golf course length that you would feel comfortable playing. So if you hit your driver 200 yards on average, they think you should play a golf course that's 5,200 to 5,400 yards in length, so 26 or 27 times the length that you hit your driver on average. However, if you hit the ball 275 yards off the tee on the average, that multiplier is a little bit different. They have you in the 6,700 to 6,900 yard range. So you're looking at more like 24 to 25 times how far you hit the driver. That's a good starting point, I suppose. Some people have some other ideas. Over the years, I've heard using the 5-iron as a baseline club. How far you hit your 5-iron times a multiplier, typically of like 33 to 35, determines how far of a golf course that you should play. So if you hit your 5-iron 200 yards using that 35 times multiplier, you could play a golf course as long as 7,000 yards. Okay, well that's fine. We can come up with that number. We can use different clubs. We can use your 7-iron. We can use whatever club that you want to try to figure out your baseline length from a multiplier standpoint. However, that doesn't really tell the whole story. And more often than not, there are other considerations that go into deciding the best set of tees to play for your game. A lot of people have a tendency to pick the mixture of tees that is the longest they can play without being completely uncomfortable and miserable. Like bordering on miserable, but not quite. And I don't think that's the right answer either. I think we go out to play golf. We pay to play golf. We go out there to try to have fun, have a good time with our friends, challenge ourselves, and have a good four, five, six hours, whatever the length of that round is, out there on the golf course. So if you're trying to have fun, then you should try to set yourself up with the best opportunity to have fun while you're playing golf. Lower scores, shorter clubs into greens, that's something you should really look at. So really you got to decide what you're trying to accomplish out there that day. Are you trying to score well? Are you trying to challenge yourself? Maybe a mixture of both? Maybe you're not out there to play well at all. Maybe you're out there to just socialize with friends, drink and eat and talk and listen to music, whatever that is, and have a good time. And the golf is kind of secondary. Really, in most cases, I think most people should play one box up than what they think they normally play. So if you normally play the one, one up tees, maybe you play two up. Have a little bit of a better time. Really important thing for me in deciding this answer to this question is what kind of clubs do I have going into greens? Do you have short irons? Do you have wedges, nine irons, eight irons, maybe seven irons into some of the longer holes? That's really the fun setup, right? You're going to have shorter clubs in. You're going to hit greens more often. You're going to have better chances at birdie and par and maybe not as many high numbers on the card. And if you're trying to do that, then you should pick the tee box that allows you to do that the best. If you're really trying to challenge yourself out there and you want to play from all the way to the tips, you got to know that you're going to play with longer clubs into pretty much every green. And that could be a difficult time for you. I played golf with a guy once in North Carolina, around the border of North Carolina, South Carolina. We never met. Got on the first tee, this Arnold Palmer design, really tough golf course turned out. It was about 7,000 yards from the tips. And he asked what set of tees he wanted to play. So I don't really care. You can pick what you'd like. He said, I'd like to play from the tips. I said, sure. But it turns out he didn't really hit the drives that far. He wasn't hitting them, you know, 275 off the tee. He was hitting them more like 240, 250. Not particularly straight. And he wasn't an especially skilled golfer, especially for someone who's trying to play that tee box. So after making a couple doubles, a triple, quad early in the round, we got to the fifth hole and he asked if I would be comfortable moving up a tee box. Totally fine with it. 
You don't want to be out there to punish yourself and have a bad time, have a tough day, and then know that you paid to get your own butt kicked all day. You also don't want it to be too easy necessarily, but here's my philosophy about the minimum length of tees that you should play. Until you've shot 54 for 18 holes from any set of tees, you can use every set of tees. So that means you could play the 4,000 yard set of tees, you could play 4,700 sets of tees. All those things should be in play for you in consideration depending on what you want to try to accomplish. On family trips, over the years we have 12, 16 guys that play together. We have a wide range of not only skill level, but ages. So people don't necessarily hit it as far. So often we wind up playing from way up tees. Turns out that can be quite a disadvantage for someone who hits the ball a long way. Brings all of the trouble into play. Becomes kind of an interesting equalizer. It's a different way of thinking about and looking at a golf course even when you play from that far up. Most people think, oh, the closer you get, the easier it's going to be to score. But that's not necessarily true for every single golf course unless you play that set of tees the right way to score. So you can still get an interesting examination of your game even if you play a set of tees that you think is frankly beneath your skill level. But there are other things that go into play. You need to know the kind of golf course that you're playing. Are the conditions firm and fast or are they soft and weak? If the ball's not going to roll out, that means you're going to lose 15 to 20 or maybe 30 yards off of every drive that you hit. Makes every shot longer, makes every hole longer, makes the golf course play longer. If it's firm and fast and you know that the greens are going to be difficult to hold depending on how you hit your ball, then maybe you want to play up a box or even two because you're going to put shorter irons in your hand and you're going to have a better shot of hitting the ball high enough to hold the putting surfaces, give yourself looks at par and birdie or better, and keep away those kind of frustrating moments where you wind up long, left, right, because of bad bounces and inaccurate shots. That's a really key indication of all of this. And you also need to know kind of how the golf course plays. What are the choke points? Where does the airway start to come in? How far out there do you feel comfortable hitting it if there are water hazards in play, if there's a lot of bunkering out there? You need to know those things about where you're trying to play. And the most important thing I can tell you is you can change your mind. You can change your mind. If you don't like playing the set of tees as you're playing that day, move back. Move up. Play a varied set of tees. Play a red, white, and blue. Play one set of tees on the A hole, then on the B hole you play a next set of tees, and the C hole you play another set of tees, and then vary it six different times across the round. It's up to you. But what my recommendation would be, whether you are a beginning golfer, intermediate golfer, long skill golfer, is to prioritize fun. Because that's what's going to keep you coming back. It's, going to, it's what's going to give you the best opportunity to score well. And then every now and then, get out there, take a step back to another tee box, try a tougher golf course, give yourself a challenge, and see if that can do something for you competitively. Tell me what you think about which tees you pick from, what you look for when you're trying to make those decisions. Always interested to hear from you about that. Please consider subscribing to our channel. I'm Ryan Balaji. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Have fun out there.